Thank God for those testimonies in the gospel, um, which constantly refer to him in this way. We, th we are thankful for those testimonies in the gospels that reflect the father's words towards his son, such as, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. This tells us that he passed the scrutiny of his father and was indeed qualified before the father to be the slain lamb. And we must see him in that capacity as the lamb for sinners slain. We see in the Passover feast that on the 14th day of that 10th month, um, the lamb that passed that inspection was to be slain. In the words of Exodus, um, verse, verses 6 of chapter 12, it says, And you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight to atone for our sins, you see. Christ must not only be a lamb without spot or blemish, but he must be a slain lamb. We see him as a slain lamb in the book of Revelation again. Chapter 5 and verse 12, worthy is the lamb that was slain. Chapter 13 and verse 8, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. This is how he takes away the sins of the world. This is how our sins are purged. This is how our salvation is accomplished. Christ slain for our sins. Christ nailed to Calvary's tree so that in the shedding of his blood our sins might be washed away. And so because of our sins that have been washed away, we are shielded from the condemnation of the wrath of God for the judgment that we so deserve. This is what happened on the Passover night. The Passover lamb was slain. The blood was applied to the doorposts and the lintel. And with the application of that blood, there came the promise. And that promise was fulfilled in Exodus chapter 12 and verse 13. For it says, The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. What rich gospel truths are pictured here in the Old Testament. And the impact of this should be profound upon our lives. To move us from a deep and solemn reverence before Christ to a deep and solemn reverence of the Lamb that was slain. How can we fail to humbly bow before the one who became the Passover lamb for us? How can we fail to worship him with grateful hearts, seeing as we do how he lived such a perfect life and died a perfect death? We're grateful for his humanity. We're grateful for his sinlessness. And we're grateful for his willingness to not only be the perfect lamb, but to be the lamb that was slain. I'm going to end off here. I'll consider the Passover calls us to faith in my next recording. But let me give you this thought. So the Passover lamb impacts us today. And it should lead us to reverence for Christ. Every time we partake of the Passover um, meal in a sense or celebration of the Passover or the communion meal. We should consider with reverence the impact the Passover had on the entire world and on our lives. So I look forward to the Passover, which will call us in faith. May the Lord bless you as we continue to uh, share our lockdown and this time of trial during this pandemic. Um, may you rest well in the Lord during this time and find your strength in Him and no other. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. And I do pray, Lord, that there will be some benefit that each one of us will receive from this uh, episode of uh, Israel being so kindly uh, provided for by the Lord. That he provided for them the blood that was to be painted on the doorposts and the lintels. So that each one who was under the blood, so to speak, 
So each one where our Lord saw the blood, they were delivered. Thank you, Lord, that in Christ, by faith, blood has been sprinkled on my heart and yours. And so we ask, Lord, that we would enjoy uh, the, our thoughts of this Passover time for your glory, your honor, and your praise. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.